Live from the Beaulieu Broadcast Center, you're watching KFDM 6 News at 6 in HD. The fight for civil rights has been going on for decades, and back in the 60s, a former Beaumonter broke down a color line that was long accepted as the status quo. Greg Kerr has more on the man who closed a door and opened it for others to follow. Greg? Well, Kelly, it was going to happen sooner or later. Beaumont's Jerry Levias led the way for racial equality when blacks had few. Levias endured many difficult, painful days and has only recently come to grips with his racially charged days in Dallas in the turbulent 1960s. And with nine seconds to play, Levias borrows into the Al Den zone. Mac White hits him, the lights go out. What this man did on the football field set the stage for generations to come. I didn't realize how much of a trailblazer I was, or I could have messed up the whole situation. And on its way. To understand the story of Jerry Levias, let's take it back nearly 50 years to 1965. <laughs> Beaumont, Texas, the professional football capital of the world. Also in 1965, Beaumont was pumping out oil and football talent. But not to the old Southwest Conference. Black athletes weren't welcomed and weren't considered for scholarships. But that all changed when Hayden Fry at SMU began recruiting Hebert High's Jerry Levias. And when Fry and his staff came to Beaumont in early 1965, it caused quite a stir. And so when they drove up, one coach, in white, all white, except for Coach Ozan, went to my grandmother's house, which is next door, and then the rest of the white coaches came into the, the house and all the neighbors were standing on the porch because they were thinking it was policemen. Fry and his staff came to Levias's house on the corner of Goliad and Glenwood. Levias signed with SMU and Fry put his career on the line. Some felt Levias sold out. It wasn't the whites that gave him the biggest problem, it was the blacks because they felt like he was crossing the line. Levias's older sister, Charlena. People would pass by here and um, say really bad things to my parents. I mean, really, really nasty things about Jerry being um, a white boy. We are going to walk nonviolently and peacefully. In the mid-1960s, much of the South was fighting social change. Saying that this is an unlawful assembly. The battle over civil rights divided much of the nation. When Levias made the roughly 300-mile trip to Dallas and the campus of SMU, he quickly found out his presence wasn't welcomed by most students and even many teammates. Having to take a shower, they didn't want to take showers with me. Uh, some of the trainers did not want to tape my ankles or have anything to touch me and stuff like that. So it was isolation uh, at that point. And I talked to my sister Charlena. And I would say, you know, I can't take this anymore. I just wanted him to fight, but he was the person that thought that he could do it better by showing him what he could achieve, you know, through education and the football. Levias excelled at SMU, not only in football, but in the classroom. But he was still viewed by many as a black man in a white man's world. Isolated with little social life, he lived three years alone in his dorm room on the SMU campus. But then the first roommate that I had, uh, his parents didn't want him rooming with me. And the second roommate that I had, uh, he had to move out because none of the other people would associate with him because he was rooming with me. Levias has got more moves than Little Sheba. Nearly a half century after Levias arrived in Dallas and put on that SMU uniform, his legacy is rock solid. But Jerry still can't help but think, what if he had kissed Dallas, SMU, and the Southwest Conference goodbye during his weakest moments? And if I had not accomplished the things that I accomplished or did not handle myself in the right way, it would have set integration back in the South for athletes and for black people uh, in the country during that time. Now, Jerry Levi has spent six years in professional football with the old Houston Oilers, where he was an AFL All-Star, and then to the San Diego Chargers. He then used that education his parents wanted him so badly to have, working with Conoco Oil and finding success in business. And Kelly, you know, Levias uh, really didn't talk about his SMU years for many, many years. I think there was so much pain still coming out of that. Mm -hmm. But now he seems more at ease. And when I talked to him, I think he, you know, kind of he was letting it go a little bit, kind of putting closure on those years. But there's no doubt about this. When, when it comes time to be said and done, 
This guy is a true legend of this city and should be remembered for that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you had a long interview with him, and you can see more of that? On KFDM.com, so check it out. We'll have it on there shortly. Okay, okay. thanks, Greg. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. And coming up on KFDM News at 6, it's only July, but some people already have back to school on the mind. We'll explain.